The marine animals that I work with are sea snails. And so for most people, when you think of a venomous animal, you think of a scorpion or a snake or a spider, but you probably will never think of a snail. Although they're snails, very slow moving, they are prolific hunters. And so they hunt fish, worms, and other snails. And um, they do this using what we call a venom apparatus, which is made up of a, a venom bulb, sort of like the heart. It pumps the venom through this thing called a venom duct, which gets delivered through a harpoon-looking like structure called the radula. The radula is filled with venom, and then it's delivered through the proboscis. So hence, these group of snails, which are made up of cone snails, um, turids, and terebrids, are called toxoglossid uh, mollusks. And toxoglossid means poison tongue. So the Proboscis has a dart on the end, and it looks like a tongue with a, a poison dart on the end of them. They've always had an interest in terms of their, their beauty and their diversity, and until recently in the 1970s when the, the toxins started to be characterized, we've now found out that they're also scientifically functional in that their venoms can be so useful for biomedical purposes. These snails produce what are known as neurotoxins, and so these neurotoxins are used to modulate signaling in neuronal circuits or the nervous system. And in particular, the toxins that I study affect iron channels. So iron channels are sort of um, uh, portals to the cell. They, they manage what things go in and out of uh, particular cells. The toxins modulate how these channels work. And so if we're able to identify these toxins, then we're able to understand more about what causes uh, for example, pain signaling in the nervous system. And so if we can, for example, say by shutting down a particular iron channels, it prevents pain from moving forward. It helps us to investigate more about how signaling is, is occurring. The first um, toxin found in these nails that's been put to use is, came from conus maggots. And its, um, its toxin uh, is exactly as expressed in the venom duct. Uh, it's called Prealt is the official drug name and they use it to treat chronic pain in HIV and cancer patients. Um, and what's exciting about Prealt is until Prealt was discovered, most painkillers were sort of mo morphine based, right? And so the problems with morphine is that it's addictive, it loses its potency over time and things of that sort. But Prealt is not that. It's not addictive because it doesn't work on the opioid receptor. Instead, it works on these calcium channels. And so for uh, drug discovery, it was a novel breakthrough because it not only identified a new target for investigating pain, but it identified one that had less side effects than the current um, remedies being used. Prealt is the first drug. Um, it took about 30 years to get it, <laughs> but it is out there, and that means that um, it sort of legitimized the, the idea that these toxins can be used for um, drug development. And so the, the sort of very long-term goal for our research is trying to find other toxins that can serve as potential drug targets for not just pain, but perhaps with epilepsy and heart disease.